In this video tutorial, we'll create a modal window, one with a scale animation, and another with a rotate animation, just like that. First, let's create an HTML file with the basic tags. This step is not required, I just want to link to Bootstrap so I can use the glyph icons. Next, we're going to create a button component so I can show the modal. Just kidding, I'm never going to use a button component. This is all about divs. See my video called Everything is a Box. Now I'm just going to style this div. I'm going to give it a different cursor when we hover over it. I'll give it a background color. I'll change the foreground color to white, give it a little bit of padding inside, make it inline blocks so that it doesn't take the entire line, um, give it rounded corners, center the text, and give it a margin. Now I'm just going to create a show model function that runs in the onclick event, and I'm just going to alert high just to see that it works. Now these are the two components of the modal window, just the container, which is the shadow behind it, and the modal window itself, which is the little box um, that's inside that shadow. Now we are going to style the modal window container, that's that shadow behind it. I'm going to give it position fixed so that it, uh, basically its top left starts from the browser window. I'll give it a background red for now, and I'll set its top and left to zero, and I'll make its Z index higher than all the other components, and I'll make it background black with a bit of opacity inside that background so we can see the elements behind it. Now I'm going to transition on opacity so that when we change the opacity property it will animate. The pointer events will be set to none so that we can actually still click components behind it even though it's there and opacity zero just makes it not even show so it's almost like it's not even there right now. But for now I'm just going to comment that out so it's activated and we can actually uh, style the modal window box within it. Now the modal window box will just give it a width and height of 200. We're going to give it a, a drop shadow and we're going to make it position absolute so that it's relative to the modal window container. Now this top and left uh, it basically will center it on the screen and I'll give it a padding of 10 pixels and a background of white. We actually don't need that margin auto over there. Um, for now, I'm going to put the pointer events to none and opacity zero so it deactivates the modal window container. Now I'm going to give the container an ID, and that way we can basically activate it through JavaScript. I'm going to pass that ID into the show modal function, and I'm going to get element by ID so we can get that container, and I'm going to get the box within it. Okay, with the query selector, is basically like a find within that container. Now I'm going to style this container with JavaScript, so I'm basically going to style. I'm going to give it pointer events so that uh, you know we can't click behind it. Okay, basically, we'll take all the pointer events and we'll set the opacity one. Uh, that's what activates this modal window. But instead of just activating this window, let's also animate it. So to do that, first we need to apply two things to it. We'll give it a transform of zero and a transition of none, so that it does it immediately. Just sets it to zero. Now we're going to request animation frame because it takes a little bit of time for that to do that. So we basically say when you're done doing that, then do this. So after after it's done scaling it to zero, we're going to scale it to one and give it a transition of 0.5 seconds. So that's what actually animates it. And you see it animating when we click on it now. Now if we didn't have that request animation frame, it wouldn't work. You see how now it's not animating it? It's because it, those two lines before it, they just need some time to apply, and that's why we use that request animation frame. Now let's add a second animation um, to this. Instead of just the scale, we're going to also do a rotate animation. And we're going to set its parameter, basically an animation parameter. If an, anim is equal to rotate, then it's going to make the transform, uh, it's going to rotate the y. Uh, initially to minus 70 degrees and when it actually does the animation if it's set to rotate it will set it back to zero and you'll see what that means in a second I'm gonna, I'm gonna run it and because the animation of the rotate is in 3d we're just gonna add a couple of um, CSS or properties to make that work. Don't worry uh, what those mean exactly for now, but they just need to be applied when we do these 3D effects. So let me show you what this animation looks like. When we rotate it, it starts from minus 70 and it goes back to zero. I'll just show you that again. And we'll do the scale animation as well. So those are our two basic animations for the modal window, but you can, you can apply a lot more different animations. Now I'm just going to, you know, populate the modal window with some random code. 
uh, just so we can see some stuff within it. Uh, don't worry about this code exactly. This is just some uh, random field and stuff like that that I'll add. Now this button, I'm just going to make it on the on click. I'm just going to hide that modal. I'll pass it in the, the actual modal window that we want to hide. So I'm going to get the element by ID and I'm going to set its opacity to zero and its pointer events to none so that it's essentially deactivated at that point. Now I'm going to put in another file just so we can see, you know, what an actual program would look like with this modal window. So we're just going to copy the parts that I need. This first is the uh, CSS. Next, I'm going to copy the HTML that we need and throw it in there. And lastly, I'm going to take the JavaScript and put it in there. So before we had a button, but now we just have this table. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen for the DOM content loaded event. That's kind of like jQuery's ready event. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all of the items in the last column of that table, and I'm going to add a click event to them, which shows that model dialog. Now I'm just going to test it. If I click on any of these items, now that model dialog will show. Now I'm just going to give a height auto to this uh, model box so that it fits the content within it. Anyway, um, I'm going to have a link to this code in the uh, description. If you notice, most of the things that I have in this design are divs, although I do have a table here, but I could have made it divs. Uh, anyway, most of the component, I mean, most of the things that you see in my HTML are just going to be divs. I do have some spans and stuff, but everything could have been done with divs. And that's one of the points that I want to make in further videos. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.